Hey guys, Pastor Tim here. Hope you're ready to get started. We are on lesson 10. All right, we got into the double digits now. We are on lesson 10 of our Bible study series, Avoiding Confusion. And in today's Bible study, we're going to talk about the biblical understanding of justice. Now, we got a long text verse for our lesson today, so stick with me. But we'll be in Micah chapter 6, and we'll read verse 1 through 8. Verse 1 begins saying, Hear ye now what the Lord saith. Arise, contend thou before the mountains, and let the hills hear thy voice. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. O my people, what have I done unto thee, and wherein have I wearied thee, testifying against me? For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed thee out of the house of servants, and I sent, thee, I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, O oh, my people, remember now what Balak, king of Moab, consulted, and what Balaam, the son of Beor, answered him from Shittim unto Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of ram or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the Fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God? During Micah's ministry to Israel, the nation was on a spiritual roller coaster. All right, there were many different kings. All right, you had Jotham that led the people in worship of God. He was good. You had Ahaz who led the people in vile idolatry. That was bad. And then Hezekiah, who led a national revival, also good again. However, the nation again went on a downward trajectory full of depravity and absent of justice. Isaiah the prophet, a contemporary of Micah at this time, actually describes the condition of the nation in his own book in chapter 59, verse 14, when he writes, And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off, for truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. So in Micah chapter 6, we see what can very much be likened to a courtroom scene before God. God has a controversy with his people. It was in this context that God confronted his people through the ministry of Micah. God even asked the question at the beginning of our text, have I wronged you? Have I done something evil unto you? Then why have you turned away from me unto sin? Micah, in response, could give no defense for the nation, but could only ask questions about how they should respond to God's goodness. To Micah's question, God gives us verse 8. What does God require? To do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. These instructions are as relevant and needed today as they were in Micah's day. The world we live in today is not much different from Micah's in that much of the world is embroiled in sin and has rejected God. The world calls for justice today, but justice has been separated from truth. Remember, our verse in Isaiah chapter 59 talks about how truth has fallen in the streets. See, the world calls for justice, for social justice, all right, but that justice is oftentimes separated from truth. Biblical justice isn't about justice for one group of people. It is about truth and it's based upon truth so first let's talk about a framework for biblical justice defined biblically justice is the faithful application of god's law if we take a step back and we look at it scripturally all right we're going to see three basic truths number one we're going to see that god is the habitation of justice this simply means that justice is a part of god's nature therefore those who reject god or forsake god forsake true justice as well, for justice ultimately comes from God. Psalm 119 verse 137 says, Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright are thy judgments. Secondly, we see that God's people are to model just living. Now, you may not look like a model, but as a child of God, you could definitely model just living to the world around you. See, just does not simply describe someone who acts fairly towards someone else, but it also describes someone who practices godliness and righteous living in their lives each and every day. This is much like Noah in Genesis chapter 6. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked 
with God. Now, if we are to be a model of just living, this also means that we need to be a student of God's word. Because remember, justice is about truth. You can't separate justice and truth or else you won't have real justice. Therefore, what God has decreed to be right is also just. Therefore, if we are a student of God's word, it's going to help us model just living to the world around us. Thirdly, the Bible shows us that men are individually responsible. Today, most social justice ideologies place blame on collective groups of people. Because of them, things are like this. Because of them, I can't do this. Because of them, so on and so forth. However, biblical justice focuses the respo- focuses on the responsibility of the individual before God. Okay, you're responsible for yourself. See, every individual is responsible for their sin. However, God offers the gospel to individuals as well who will turn to him and be- and put their faith and trust in him as savior. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. See, God calls us personally, individually to repentance, and with it grants forgiveness. However, forgiveness kind of goes against the grain or the tendency of secular social justice, which would rather assign perpetual guilt for the sins of a group or even the sins of a group's ancestors. So we've looked at the framework of biblical justice. Now let's secondly look at the expressions of biblical justice. Now biblical justice takes place in at least two forms. Number one, it takes place in communicative justice. All right, This is the relational aspect of justice, having a right relationship between you and God and you and man. And secondly, it takes place in distributive justice. All right, This is the rendering of judgment, righting wrongs, and meeting out punishment. Now this is reserved for God and God-ordained authorities. First, let's see how biblical justice should be expressed in society. Deuteronomy 15, 7 says, If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thine heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. Leviticus 19, verse 15 says, Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. The way that we express biblical justice in society is to care for those in need and to show no prejudice unto others. Overall, consider others over yourself or before yourself. See, biblical justice is based on the character of God and to care for those in need, all right, and to show no prejudice, all right, is obviously reflective of the character of God. All right. Justice in no way should be based upon the winds or the whims of our culture. All right. It should be based on the unchanging firm foundation of God's character. Secondly, let's look at how it is expressed among Christians. The question you need to ask yourself is how did Christ treat those around him? You know, the whole WWJD thing. All right. And if you read about Christ's ministry on earth, you'll see that he reached out to those whom society generally despised. He reached out to the leopard, the lame, the broken, the publican, the sinners. All right. And we as Christians should reflect that in our lives as well when how we meet out justice or live justly amongst those around us. James chapter one, verse 27 says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Lastly, let's look at secular counterfeits of biblical justice. First, let's look at secularized social justice. Secular social justice today tends to place people in various victim groups. All right, It's not about the individual, it's about the entire group. Now, when they're placed in these various victim groups, it it develops or it creates this permanent victimization, all right? Everything's always against me. I'm always the victim. Therefore, everyone who is not in a particular victim group, therefore, has to be the perpetrator of the injustice, all right? You have no choice in the matter. And since you are, therefore, the offender, not only do you have no choice in that matter, but you also have no voice as well in which to defend yourself or to, you know, correct the wrong, all right? You're not the victim, therefore you have no say. The truth is, every injustice is the result of sin. And we are all victims of Adam's sin. 
Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We should all guard against a war of blame that hurls accusations of injustice without acknowledging personal choice or furthering reconciliation. All right, that's what Adam did in the garden. He, he cast blame, he cast accusation, and in the end, it didn't solve anything. It is important to note that in social justice today, that some of the categories of victimization are grouped around things that we as Christians know to be unbiblical behavior. All right, remember, it's justice apart from truth. And as a Christian, we know justice apart from biblical truth is not real justice. As a Christian, it is important that we do not forsake the truth of God and what we know to be true, just, and righteous, all right, for that which is deemed to be right and quote-unquote justice in the world today, especially if it goes in opposition of God's word. Secondly, let's look at critical race theory. This theory views the development of Western culture as the result of systems of white power and racism. Proponents of CRT believe that racism is embedded in Western civilization through systemic racism and unconscious bias. Pretty much saying, if you are not part of a minority group, you really can't help but have exhibit racism or some biased thought. Ironically, to say that all white people have some level of unconscious bias against all people of color is, in fact, forming another racial bias. Here's the thing. Only God knows the intents of one's heart. All right? And to determine that purely based upon the color of one's skin is wrong. As we discussed in our previous lesson, racism and prejudice is a ugly and terrible sin. All right? And it is not only perpetrated by one group of people. As Christians, we also understand we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. And the best way we can express that love is through the preaching of the gospel. And where there has been racial or ethnic divisions, God desires restoration and reconciliation. Not perpetual guilt, all right, and not separation. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10 through 14 says this, And I have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. This is a newly saved person. Where there is neither Jew nor Greek, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, Bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humblest of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Lastly, let's look at liberal religious social justice. This modern social justice movement insists that engaging in acts of social justice is a requirement for preaching the gospel. However, we know that the gospel is centered solely on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. One of the main dangers of adding secular social justice to the gospel, all right, is not, first of all, it's adding unto the gospel, all right? You don't add any works unto that, all right? It's faith in Jesus Christ and his sacrifice upon the cross. But the biggest danger is that because secular social justice is based largely upon the opinions and the whims of man, it therefore makes culture the gauge of what truth and justice is, not the word of God. In conclusion, we understand that God established scriptural justice long before man developed social justice. And God desires that we believe and practice the justice which he commands, remembering that justice cannot be apart from truth. And not to be pulled away by the philosophies of man all right, towards things that contradict God's word. Now, in our lesson for next week, we're going to cover how we can better express and practice biblical justice in the world around us. In that meantime, though, I hope you guys are staying faithful in your devotions. I hope you're able to get all the blanks for the lesson today. And if you have any questions, as usual, you can ask me at church. You, can, you know how to contact me. If 
for some reason you're you're watching this video and you do not go to Lighthouse Baptist Church, I encourage you find a local Bible believing church in your area, all right, and bring these questions to their pastor as well. Other than that, guys, I hope to see you in the next video. God bless.